mean, ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated with the universe and, of course, not knowing nearly as much as I would have wanted to know. So in Metacosmos, I, I took this metaphoric notion of black holes because I find them so interesting. And I say metaphor because it's, of course, about different things, about humans and about our searches and um, feelings. This is Anna Thorvaldsdottir. She's an Icelandic composer who wrote the piece of music that you're hearing, Metacosmos. Metacosmos is receiving its UK premiere this month at the proms. The piece is inspired by the idea of falling into a black hole, of surrendering to an utterly powerful object that you just can't resist. Now, writing music about falling into a black hole is actually pretty hard because the scientific answer to the question, what would it sound like if you fell into a black hole, is well, even if you allowed for a medium that sound could travel through, so it's not just vacuum, then the answer is still pretty boring, if kind of funny. If you were to totally understandably scream at a constant pitch as you got closer and closer to a black hole, then the space that you occupy gets smaller and smaller and smaller the closer you get, at least radially, away from the black hole. That means that as a sound wave that you create propagates towards some observer far away, it starts to occupy increasingly larger and larger space, but it contains the same amount of energy, so it gets red shifted to lower frequencies. The closer you get to a black hole, the more more redshifted your sound becomes. Or in other words, to a distant observer, it would sound like... A much more interesting question then is, what would it feel like if you fell into a black hole? And that's where science meets art. This year is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing. And so to celebrate, the BBC Proms is hosting a variety of music inspired by science and particularly by space. That includes... Anna's Metacosmos. And fortunately for us audience members, Anna isn't only drawing inspiration from the equations of general relativity. I don't think I can ever even say that I ever studied science. I guess like when you're, a, when you're in school, you, you have to study some things and that I did, of course, but I haven't studied science at all. Although I'm not using equations, I'm using the ideas that the equations project, right? So uh, in that sense, I'm really using that inspiration. But some composers and some artists would actually be very interested in taking the exact equations and then applying them into musical terms and uh, present that. And this emphasis on feeling over rigor, over equations, is exemplified by Anna's sketches that she does before she composes a piece. So initially, when I'm writing music, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, finding the piece and uh, this process can take various months of time, but it's a very good mnemonic device for me to draw out, like, graphically uh, the process of the piece, the structure and the elements that are present within the music. So the, so the image then represents the structure for the piece and the kind of details within that structure. For example, with Metacosmos, the the graphic drawing that I did initially, the sketch, it also has all the pictures, like the harmonic progression uh, indicated at the bottom and then the overall graphic structure. So it incorporates these things that I can then remember and listen to the picture as I am writing the music into notation. Now this is actually very similar to how some scientific ideas are born. I remember in my PhD thesis, before rigorously deriving the equations that I needed, I did a graphical sketch of what the theory looked like, of some key facts, maybe a couple of key equations, but a sketch of graphically what I was trying to do. And the crossover between science and art doesn't just stop there. The end of Metacosmos consists of strings, glissandoing higher and higher and higher and the tension builds as all control is lost to the black hole. And that very much reminded me of what happens to space-time around a singularity. When you get closer to a black hole, space gets compressed further and further and further and further. So that to me was what the sound of that would be. It, was, it would be oh. strings getting tauter and tauter and tauter. That's beautiful. I mean, actually, yeah, that's a really nice thing to hear because, you know, um, 
in fact, that's not something I was thinking about consciously, but things happen either in the subconscious or, or you know, hearing you talk about it, it makes, um, makes sense to me. Meeting Anna was an amazing experience in seeing how science and art tackle different problems in different ways, but sometimes they actually tackle a problem in the same way, and sometimes they even come up with the same answer. If you'd like to hear this fascinating blend of science and music for yourself, then you can do so in person on the 22nd of July when it receives its UK premiere at the Royal Albert Hall. And if you can't make it there in person, then you can listen live on BBC Radio 3. More information down there in the links in the description. This wasn't actually a sponsored video. I should probably put a disclaimer here. The BBC just got in touch and said, would I be interested in making a video with Anna and to talk about her music and maybe go and see a few proms? And that's an amazing opportunity. So obviously I said yes. So thank you BBC for reaching out. Thank you Anna for your time. It was wonderful to interview you. Um, this is my first prom season. So I'm really, really excited to come and see some of the concerts. Let me know what you thought of me blending science and music with this channel's content down in the comments. I'd, I'd be really interested to know what you think. Cause if you like it, I'd like to do more. Pop the video a like and a share if you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.